Indeed, Brecht and Marx were the great inspirations. We wanted to uh, give Brecht his proper celebration for his 100th birthday, and we incorporated the texts of uh, Brecht into the pageant, and uh, that was an overall theme for us. It was an ambition. It was something we hadn't done. We don't do much with texts of other people and with direct quotes or with interpretation of quotes. And then with Brecht, we were really forced to do a lot of reading and to, uh, in order to make the right selection, we used the one, O hopeful blood, blood and wounded. And o head full of blood and wounds that Brecht uh, rewrote into O calf so often slaughtered. Uh, and uh, we made that as part of the pageant. And the Brecht poem was uh, uh, very hard to do because we also wanted to preserve Bach, so we wanted to sing the Bach the, uh, chorale, which is uh, very hard to sing. You know, when you use not only spoken but also lettered text, written text, the difficulties are enormous, how to expose that, how to make it part of the burning monster, how to make the singular fragmentary quotations come together to be sentences and so on. We worked forever and ever on that, how that came sort of, sort of satisfactorily together. Because we couldn't figure out how in the mind these fragments of phrases that came out of hell and were assembled by businessmen with the help of ladders and with the help of sticks and with the help of shoutings and with a team of red, devilish kind of figures, how they would stay in the mind and then add up to what Brecht had said, you know. Because you're, you're saying them to people's mind in, in, in a different way when you fragmentize them, when you take words and half phrases out of these long phrases and let them ring by themselves, and then you add them up to amount to Brecht. Instead of using the, our, our brass band, which is this almost nostalgic uh, circus brass band in various other modes, uh, I thought if we just do something much, much simpler. If we take all the junk that produces percussion sound so easily and make that into a movement piece and do it uh, like an autonomous piece all by itself, you know, not directly connected to the gates of hell, but as something that has to do with the landscape, the way it comes out of the hillside and then rolls down. And it actually can roll and they use the rolling of the drums. You know, so I thought the dancing of these objects and the guys who have to run behind them and jump over them to catch up with them to produce sound, that that would be as strong as we could be to contrast this big picture of this red monument. Everything issued out of out of the gates of hell, all the destruction forces and all the elements of of inflicting pain and and slaughter came out of the gates of hell and then were at certain times swallowed up by the gates of hell and then spit out in a different form again. Uh, it's like it's inspired by this Rodin sculpture, the, the gates of hell. You know, that big, big giant Bronx door which he meant to do much, much bigger and which has something like the Michelangelo Last Judgment in it. And uh, not quite so, but... And you know the thinker and all those figures are part of it. And, and Adam and Eve, all those famous Rodin... A lot of famous Rodin figures are actually part of the gates of hell. And uh, the, so it's that. But So I, I, I made it like a relief, like the gates of hell are. And also I wanted to have it naturally not in Bronx, but light, so it could move and make the movement part of what it, uh, what it is. 
and make it a like a world of human, not animal, but human bodies, human nudes that are that are intertwined like branches in a tree. The pageants we have been doing over the years are always about populations or about the citizenry. And the citizenry or the population which gets sacrificed or which gets attacked and killed and resurrected have been the themes for these years. And more and more we have uh, made those themes be specifically the capitalist citizenry and the, the forces of capitalism which destroy the citizenry. And the population is naked. And out of the population comes the butcher, who seems like an innocent. He is the, what you recognized in Brecht as this very innocent slaughterer, professional, butcher, educated man, simple man, obedient man, himself a sheep or a calf, and also the slaughterer of the calf, the real Nazi and the real proper citizen. Doing what he's told to do. Not cruel at all. He didn't have ever, he would never had the sense of that this man committed anything wrong. There's the striking resemblance to the behavior of, of the globalizers right now, who are also innocent and obedient and cheap to their system and do what they are told to do in innocent business transactions and, uh, and don't realize that they are participating in butcheries. Uh, the trumpet calls are like the Jericho calls, are like the, like the horn calls that set out, that do things, that, this, that make things happen. I always blow two horns. One is not enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, they harmonize with each other. They, they, uh -huh. they, you know, they, they are talking with each other, the two horns. So it's different from one horn. The, the horses look lovely. They ride around gracefully. They circle, they encircle things. They uh, come together and they end up uh, tearing the horses into bits and pieces, tearing off their legs. And uh, and that we said they become part of this functioning of hell, of the, of the gates of hell, of what was built up there as a large choreography of such elements. And the faces, their expressions changed during the play on the second day more than on the first because they got more and more destroyed as they were being tossed around, you know. And that destruction in the face added age to them. These uh, business guys are in charge of the building of that tower, uh, which in many ways is like in a passion play, like the last stages of putting, uh, uh, putting the Christ and the thieves on their scaffolding ready for slaughter. And, uh, but it isn't that yet, uh, because they haven't even started on the words yet. So the, the only, the final stage of that, when, they, when the horses are finished, when the faces are tossed, when all the little playlets are done, only then, finally, the words are assembled in a, in a readable, sense-making, line-by-line Brecht poem. Finally, you see that resolved by seeing how it adds up and it gets hammered on there. And the hammering on itself is like a mechanical uh, crucifixion. It reminds very much of crucifixions. Oh, okay, this yeah. is the slaughter. And that's related to the driving of people to hell. <coughs> well, I think Brecht saw that pretty correctly about Nazi Germany that it wasn't just as if that was a game by a wild man or by an individual who was crazy. But it was the captains of industry who provided for all the reality that needed to be behind that craziness. They did it. 
And they are the same ones who built up West Germany right after. The same forces that created the Nazi era are still at work. And that we have to act like prophets in this situation and yell at people and tell them that it's not finished. And that they are doing horror and not the peace and harmony that they pretend to do or that their politicians tell them they are doing.